Images like these coming out of Gaza have shocked the world. But here's what some journalists on Israeli television have to say about them. כשאנחנו רואים את התמונות של ההפצצות של הבניינים ושל הגופות מעזה, בפעם הראשונה אני לפחות אומר, who cares, זה לא מספיק, זה לא מעניין, זה צריך להיות הרבה יותר חזק. Independent reporting on the devastating impact that Israel's military campaign has had on Gaza civilians is largely non-existent. And Israeli media ignored the country's actions in the occupied territories long before October 7th. There's even an expression for the Israeli press's long-standing attitude, quiet, we're shooting. We talked to veteran Israeli journalist Gideon Levy about why much of the country's media establishment chooses to either ignore or glorify the suffering of Palestinians. You have to be part of the dehumanization of the Palestinians. You don't have to show them as human beings. You don't have to tell the story of their tragedies and catastrophes. You can really ignore them. When South Africa made the case that Israel has been committing genocide in Gaza, it showed the UN's International Court of Justice clips like this from Israeli media as evidence. See, over the last decade, a large network of right-wing media outlets has emerged in Israel, and its coverage explicitly dehumanizes Palestinians. חיות אדם, לא פחות מזה. רובם כמובן בהתחלה מכחישים כל קשר לאירוע, ובאמצעות כלים ויכולות מסוימות אנחנו בעצם מצליחים להוציא מהם את ההודעות הראשונות. But have these new outlets really changed the country's media landscape? The only difference between the right-wing media and the mainstream media is in the cover. Only the cover is different. The right-wing uh, uh, right media has no PC, no political correctness. They can call to exterminate all the people of Gaza, which the mainstream media will not feel well about it. They want it in a more elegant way. So, for example, don't call it a genocide. Kill as many as you want. Hands of thousands, 100,000, but don't call it genocide, because this makes us feel not good with ourselves. The killing itself doesn't bother. This partially explains why not much independent reporting has even made it onto more traditional Israeli news channels. Another reason? Many Israeli news outlets rely heavily on information from the military and often butter up officials to maintain that access. Now, the army created a very sophisticated way in which if you want information from the army, you have to behave well to the army, otherwise he will exclude you. You depend a lot on the goodwill of the army. And the army has the biggest PR unit in Israel. And, and they do it very sophisticated. Israeli media will often air footage like this, given to them by the military, without scrutiny or additional context. Journalists also allow military spokespeople to regurgitate government talking points with little to no pushback. Like in this next clip, where a military spokesperson justifies the horrific conditions that Palestinians face in an Israeli prison. ואתה אפשר לראות שמדובר במיטות קומותיים בלי מזרן ואין אסלה, רק בול פגיעה וחושך כמעט מוחלט לאורך היום. כולם אזוקים ברגליים כל הזמן, ואחד לשני. בהתנהלות הזאת, ככה הוא צריך להיות. אוקיי? מה שהיה ב-7 לאוקטובר לא יחזור. Sometimes journalists repeat these talking points themselves, like in this report on the bombing of Al-Shifa hospital. אבל בצהל אומרים שאחרי תקיפה כזאת מסיבית בלילה, הם רואים שחיקה ביכולת של החוליות של חמאס. Since the media heavily leans on the military in its reporting, officials can dispense information and even disinformation that shapes the media narrative in their favor. The outcome is not journalist. Here it's definitely not journalist. You can see how everyone reports the same thing, so you understand that they got it all by one source, never checked anything. That's partially how the military helps ensure Israel's public keeps supporting war, occupation and apartheid. When journalists actually are reporting from on the ground in Gaza themselves, they're usually embedded with the Israeli military. And their reports often echo military propaganda. 
במשך שנים ישראל מדברת על בית החולים שיפא ועל הקשר שלו לטרור של חמאס, והנה אני חושב שההוכחה הניצחת נמצאת עכשיו. אנחנו מביאים אותה בפעם הראשונה למעשה, הצבא חושף את המנהרות האלה, בדיוק מה ששמענו לאורך כל השנים האחרונות על מה שקורה מתחת לעזה בכלל ולשיפא בפרט. International media outlets largely agree that Israel hasn't provided the evidence to conclude that Al Shifa Hospital is a Hamas base. The reporting of these embedded journalists is subjected to a process known as prior review, a practice that allows governments to shape media coverage. In exchange for on-the-ground access, journalists grant officials the authority to review their reporting before it's published. The United States helped pioneer this practice during the Vietnam War with the aim of shaping the media narrative to maintain public support for that war. And so, Israel is continuing that tradition today. The whole narrative that is told to the Israelis about this war is a fake narrative in the way that only one side of the reality is being shown here. It's not just embedded reporters who are having their work checked by the government. The military censor unit reviews the reporting done by many news programs before stories make it to air. And some programs will even publicize that the unit has approved their stories, something the law doesn't require them to do. We have very critical uh, journalists who can be very, very sharp against the economical situation, against the political situation, against parties, against the prime minister, everything. There is one holy cow that's the army. Journalists with a more critical view of the military are afraid of being considered out of line by the public. which polls show supports Israel's campaign in Gaza. Also, it's important to remember that all Israeli men and women are required to serve in the country's military. And this relationship between journalists and the public didn't start last year. Everything is more in intensified in conditions of war. Nothing is new. You don't want to criticize the soldiers in times of, of peace or occupation. You don't want to tell stories about crimes being committed by soldiers in normal times because nobody wants to hear it because it's our sons. It's the friends of our sons and the sons of our friends. We don't want to hear those things, please. Over the years, some Israeli journalists have even been attacked by people angered by their reporting or perspective. And Palestinian journalists are largely excluded from Israeli media. Besides rare exceptions like 972 magazine, Most outlets don't hire them. And even before the current escalation, Israel's media has only rarely critically engaged with the country's decades-long occupation of Palestinian territory and its treatment of the people who live there. Here's an example. When Israeli human rights group Bet Salem released a report in 2021 that described the country as an apartheid regime, it received coverage all over the world, except from outlets in Israel. The fear of the, of the mainstream public opinion is uh, very, very strong. But, you know, it is such a mutual process that you don't know what comes before what. It's a vicious circle. Because the journalists by themselves already believe in what they do. At least the military correspondents, for sure, they are really admiring the army. Once, I would like to hear that a certain... Commander is not so good, did some mistakes, failed in some, nothing. All of them are brilliant, all of them are adorable, and all of them, it's, it's ridiculous. And that's why today, even as Israel continues to bombard Gaza, the Israeli media prioritizes national unity over covering the government's genocidal acts. So, when Russian media is covering the war in Ukraine, Nobody believes it because we know it's a media run by Putin and you don't get the realities through them. Here it is much worse because we don't have a Putin. We chose to be the Putins. And that's really depressing. 